Hi, I'm Dave Fornell, a digital editor with Cardiovascular Business at uh, SCCT 2022. And I have with me Brian Gosharja, uh, Division Chief of Cardiovascular Imaging and Radiology at Mass General Hospital and the incoming SCCT president. Uh, there was a, a track here at this year's conference about uh, non-coronary, non-structural heart imaging and CT, uh, which is a little bit outside the norm, but uh, I wanted to hear a little bit more about that. Oh, sure, thanks, Dave. So uh, one of the um, key names in uh, SCCT is actually not cardiac, but cardiovascular CT. So we often talk about the, uh, the coronary arteries because that's kind of what brought us all together and was uh, in, in some uh, quarters called the holy grail of imaging. Uh, I remember being a resident and seeing coronary CT become possible. Um, but we can't forget that we actually got, get here through the vessels and there's a lot of um, interesting uh, disease processes that we can really help with imaging. Um, I found a lot of energy around the non-coronary sessions, uh, a lot of interest in the aorta, um, which is a very important uh, vessel that can have a lot of uh, things go wrong, and we can help a lot. We also uh, saw a lot of uh, interest in the non-inflammatory and the inflammatory coronary diseases, um, which, while less common than classic coronary artery sclerosis, are very important to those patients. Uh, and we also saw a lot of interesting vascular sessions, uh, both on the educational side as well as the science. And take the deep dive. I mean, what, what were some of these uh, things? I, mean, I, I saw one session on SCAD, but I know that there's a myriad of others. Yeah, and SCAD has actually uh, kind of got a close cousin, fibromuscular dysplasia, that can happen in most other vessels in the body. Uh, and so they often go hand in hand. Um, and there's an increasing recognition. Um, and it's interesting because there's not a lot of tests we can do. There's not a lot of clarity, but those patients can often suffer. Uh, imaging can at least do a good job of documenting uh, the involved vessels and also help clarify diagnoses that are even difficult to make in the coronaries in the cath lab, uh, where they can be missed just as easily as they can be difficult on CT, um, we can augment our diagnosis by looking at the other vessels. And so we had a nice session uh, detailing some of those, uh, those nuances. And are a lot of these imagers, uh, radiologists or cardiologists, uh, are some centers they may be involved with uh, uh, pre-planning uh, in aortic procedures as well? Most definitely. Um, well, uh, the non-cardiac uh, imaging is more often done by radiologists. It, it's indeed a shared specialty. Um, and whether you're the one performing the images, you certainly have recipients of your reports and your images and, your, uh, and the reformats that go on by our allies in the 3D labs uh, and the uh, analysis sites that are uh, non-radiologists. Uh, so it's very important that radiologists and non-radiologists alike are aware of these kind of d diagnoses and how we can best image them. Congenital heart disease is another one that you really can't avoid. Um, you know, one to two percent of people have coronary anomalies, and that's just one of the more basic uh, um, uh, lesions. Many of them are benign, but knowing which ones are, uh, need more um, treatment and therapy and which ones we can ignore. Um, so whether you try to avoid it or not, you're going you're really to run across this um, in a normal practice. So in addition to coronary anomalies, um, there's all kinds of, of very interesting and, and uh, uh, nuanced uh, knowledge you need for congenital heart disease, um, which is actually kind of a new frontier in a way, um, because until somewhat recently, there weren't a lot of uh, people that could survive the lesions, but due to pioneering surgeries in the past few decades, uh, we now see this with increasing frequency. We also noticed that um, adults with congenital heart disease start to get adult diseases just like all other adults. And so uh, the congenital imagers also need to learn some of the more classic atherosclerotic diseases, which we need to take care of uh, to be good physicians. Uh, several years ago, I, I sat in on sessions where uh at TCT uh, where they would put up images like, you know, have you guys ever seen a patient like this? And it's all these transposed vessels or sometimes they have a single ventricle and, uh, you know, you could hear that universal sigh throughout the audience or, because they just don't want that patient because they have no idea what they're looking at or how their intervention is going to impact that patient. So uh, because these uh, congenital heart surgeons uh, have really done a good job over the last 30 years, uh, you have these patients that are surviving well into uh, old age even. And uh, this has uh, prompted, uh, I, I, I'm guessing, a lot more uh, collaboration between the PED uh, cardiologists and also with uh, interventionalists or surgeons. Yeah, it really demands a multidisciplinary approach. And so at our hospital, uh, like many, we have a multidisciplinary team and it might involve uh, pediatric cardiologists, adult cardiologists, imagers, interventionalists, surgeons, uh, radiologists, and we all get together and try to uh, help decide what's the best uh, pathway to diagnose and treat the patients. And simple things we take for granted in more 
more classical adult diseases, like how do you get contrast from a vein into the heart, uh, may not have a, an easy answer um, with different flows being redirected um, and the different types of ways some of the surgeries can, uh, can break down. So you also need a little bit of historic knowledge to know the surgeries that may have been done and aren't done anymore, but still um, are around. Uh, and so I, I find that uh, there's no one specialist that can kind of own all that knowledge or uh, do all the actions needed. So uh, the best way is to kind of cross disciplinary teams. Is there any special attention in sessions paid to aortic disease? We notice in, in um, a lot of non-vascular imaging, we can pick up on large aortas. So mm -hmm. um, aneurysms of the aorta can be devastating. In fact, if you have a type A dissection, so if the wall tears, um, the survival uh, percentages decline about every half hour. So rapid diagnosis in, uh, is key. Uh, so there's no better way than a CT scan, provided you don't know to look for it. The other problem is that uh, symptoms can be very vague. So it's very easy to do a public uh, health campaign to say chest pain, left arm, come to the hospital, strokes, brain attack, that kind of thing. But the symptoms in an aorta, uh, which supplies the whole body, can move from side to side and can be very vague. It can present as back pain, stomach pain. Um, and so recognizing those patients at risk, if you're lucky enough, is huge because you can screen them and watch for the aorta to enlarge and, uh, and that's when the risk really accrues. Were there any discussions uh, at this meeting with uh, either venous or with uh, pulmonary embolism? Um, a few. Uh, there's um, you know, actually one of um, our collaborators from Uganda talked about how that's one of the more common uses of cardiac CT is for pulmonary embolism in, in Uganda. She actually is one of the two cardiac CT readers in the whole country of Uganda, uh, but that's actually their key application, although they do a lot more and a lot of uh, advanced things there. And uh, there's also been sessions here about uh, imaging uh, with uh, minorities or uh, disadvantaged populations. Um, and I had a good discussion yesterday with one of those speakers that uh, went down uh, and discussed uh, various presentations with women that might be subtle, but uh, they're different than men. Most definitely. Um, women and men aren't quite the same and can get different um, disorders. Spontaneous coronary dissection is the one that comes to mind first for me. Uh, we often, even classical atherosclerosis, we miss in uh, women because the presentations may be different. The new chest pain guidelines uh, address that. In fact, they kind of offer a diverse differential of symptoms that might be equivalent to chest pain. Um, and the other uh, uh, diagnosis that we often neglect to mention is spontaneous dissection, which was actually ironically identified in retrospect in a series of thousands of angiograms reviewed by uh, expert researchers and we realized we were missing that for quite a while um, and whether you wanna, want to or not you're going to run across this when you do uh, coronary CT whether you identify it or not is also uh, uh, I guess up for debate um, so yet most definitely uh, having a, a diverse chorus of, of uh, patients in our research studies and in our researchers um, helps us not forget the uh, that not all diseases are the same. Okay. I appreciate your overview. Thanks. Thank you.